Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ happening live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the Praise world. The Lord. Rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the heart to learn and for the faithfulness of your children as they come every time. We're asking, Lord, you open the pages of the scriptures to every one of us tonight in Jesus' name. Feed us with your word and give us the grace and the strength to follow after and to live according to your word in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody there shout amen. Amen. Tonight we're coming to John chapter 21. I was studying from verse 18 all through to verse 23. Before I read everything, I'm just going to select some verses to read. Verse 19. They speak he, signifying what death it should glorify God. Signifying by what death it should glorify God. And when he had thus spoken, he says unto him, follow me. Verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, sees the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper. And said, Lord, which is he that betrays thee? Peter, seeing him, says to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? In verse 22, Jesus says unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. You see that word follow in verse 19. Follow me. You see the word following in verse 20. The one whom Jesus loved following. And then what Jesus said to Peter. After Peter pointed to John and said, He is following. What shall this man do? And the Lord said unto Peter, Leave that alone. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. You understand that our Lord Jesus Christ had just finished commanding Peter and also commissioning him, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. It was telling him to feed the flock. And it was after that commandment to feed the flock, he now said, Follow me. We're coming back to verse 15 of John chapter 21. So when they had died, Jesus says unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, thou knowest 
that I love thee. He says unto him, feed my lambs. He wanted to know how much he loved him. And when Peter confirmed that he loved him as much as he could, and he asked the question the second time, lovest thou me? And he said, yes, Lord. And he asked the question the third time, lovest thou me? And Peter broke down emotionally and wondered, you're asking me the third time. Already told you I love you, and you know all things, you know my heart. I do love you. I really love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I love you. And then Jesus repeated that again, feed my lambs. So very important. That's what we're expected to do as a pastor, as a teacher, as a leader, as a house fellowship leader, as a worker, anyone in the church, you know something. Feed other people with that word of God. It was saying when he said, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. It was saying, feed my flock. We're looking at Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 28, it says, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, the lamb, the sheep, the young, the old, everyone that comes under the banner of Christ as Savior. That's the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. He purchased them. He bought them. He has provided eternal life for them. And if they're going to live in strength and going to live in grace because of that new birth purchased by the Lord, they must be fed with the word of God. And Peter himself, recollecting that, when he wrote his own epistle to the believers, he said in 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, reading from verse 1, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, feed the flock, of God. What Jesus had told him, he passed on to all people, all ministers, all preachers, all pastors, all leaders in the church. Feed the flock of God. Actually, this wasn't something new, just to the Old New Testament. If you come to Je uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, you will see what it means to feed the people of God with the word of God, the bread of life. Jeremiah chapter 3, reading from verse 15. And I will give you pastors, in the plural, according to my mind, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. When God raises up a pastor for a location, a pastor for a congregation, a pastor for a local church, and then pastors for all the local churches. His purpose of raising them up is so that they will feed the church of the living God with the word of God, with knowledge, and with understanding. That's what Jesus meant when he told Peter, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Feed them with the knowledge of the gospel the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of salvation, the knowledge of the Christian life, and the understanding of what they will do and how they will live to get to heaven. Feed them with knowledge and with understanding. Chapter 23 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm reading here from verse 4. It says in verse 4, it says, and I will give you, give, set up shepherd over them. Shepherd, pastor, the same thing. Leader, teacher, the same thing. It says, I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. Their fear of the future will be dealt with. Their fear of guilt will be dealt with 
and the fear of where do they go after they leave this world, that fear will be dealt with when they are properly fed with the word of grace, the word of love, and the word of his mercy. It says, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. When we are properly fed in the word of God, it says we'll not be lacking. We will have what it takes to live the Christian life. We'll have what it takes to stand and stand for righteousness. In fact, the favor God shows to a congregation, the favor God shows to anyone and a group of people is that he gives us teachers of the word. He gives us pastors who will feed us according to his love. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 13. I see chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 19. I see chapter 30, verse 19, for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. I thought somebody there will say, Amen. Amen. That's the purpose of the teaching. That's the purpose of giving us pastors and shepherds that will lead us and teach us and feed us of the word of God so that our sorrow is taken away. Our condemnation is taken away. Our fears are taken away. And then it says, they shall weep no more. It shall be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, is saying that, that even though there might be adversity in the land, there might be famine in the land, and there might be scarcity in the land, and the water of affliction, yet shall he not take, thy, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And then ear shall hear a voice, a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. This is the way. That's what the pastor does. That's what the shepherd does. That's what the Lord expected that Peter will do. Do that to the congregation and show them the way and say, this is the way. Are you looking for salvation? This is the way. Are you asking for her to be sanctified? This is the way. Are you asking for the power of God in your life? This is the way. Are you sick and you want to get healed? This is the way. Are you in bondage and you want to be set free? It's the pastor, the teacher of the the word of God that he gives us, feeding us and leading us with knowledge and understanding that says, this is the way, walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. I pray that these promises the Lord has given us will not elude us and we will enjoy the promises of the Lord in Jesus' name. Actually, the Lord said in Amos, Amos, I'm looking at Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, the condition of people in the world in the last days. And the condition of the people in the days in which we're living. Look at this in Amos chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. A I mean, of hearing the words of the Lord. And you can be a witness to that as you look at our country. You can be a witness to that as you look at your own nation, if you're outside the nation here. You can be a witness to that anywhere you are. There is a famine of the word. It appears there's worship, but the word is not there. It appears there's singing, but the word is not there. It appears there's entertainment, but the word is not there. It appears there's traditional uh, denomination, but the word is not there. there there is a famine of hearing the words of the Lord, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. But thank God we have found it here. And thank God you have discovered it. It will feed your soul. It will feed your heart. It will feed your life to be what it ought to be in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Sephaniah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13. Sephaniah chapter 3, verse 13. It says, the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. 
nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down. They shall feed and lie down. Feeding on the word of God brings a change. It brings a transformation. It makes us to stop iniquity. It makes us to stop telling lies. It makes us to totally give up a deceitful tongue and to be straightforward and to be honest and to be devoted unto the Lord. And it says, and none shall make them afraid. None shall make them afraid. If you didn't get that, I said for myself, none shall make me afraid. They will not make you afraid in Jesus' name. When the word enters in and when the word bears fruit, then it will do a great work in your heart. I'm looking at Psalm 28. Psalm 28, and I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 28, verse 7, it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusted in him, and I am held, therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance, and Tell me, feed them also and lift them up forever. The, the only thing that can lift us up out of this earth, lift us up out of our guilt, lift us up out of the degradation of the world, lift us up out of all the judgments and all the commotions of the world, lift us up forever is when we are fed with the word of God. I pray that this word will keep on feeding every one of us in Jesus' name. I come back, come back to John. I'm looking at John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And here we're reading from the last line of verse 15. It says unto him, feed my lambs. Latter part of verse 16, feed my sheep. And in verse 17, Jesus says unto him, feed my sheep. He commanded. And he also commissioned him. And he said, feed them. Don't starve them. Give them the word of God. Not the minimum you can give them, the maximum you can give them so that they are well fed. Feed my flock. Nourish them. Don't withhold the word of life from anyone. Let them feast and be nurtured on the word so that it's not like the famine has come upon them. Don't deprive them. Feed them. Feed them. Don't frighten them. Feed them. Don't fight them. Feed them. Don't frustrate them. How, are, how is the church frustrated? We come wanting to hear the word of God. We come wanting to be fed. And then we come and after we have left, we have not got anything new. We have not got anything fresh. We are frustrated. And the Lord is telling the ministers and he's telling the church leaders, he says, feed them. Don't frighten them. Feed them. Don't fight them. Feed them. Don't frustrate them. Feed them. Don't falsify the word. Give them the right word and give them what will nourish their soul. You feed them. Don't freeze them. And you feed them. Don't fleece them. You're not coming so I can get whatever you can get out of them. Don't forget them. Don't forsake them. Feed them. Feed them faithfully. Feed them lovingly. Feed them purposefully for Christ's sake. And after commanding, feed them, he said, follow me. Now, as we're fed in the world, it is not only that we provide the bread of life and provide the bread that is able to save our souls, able to sanctify us. If the food is before you, if the bread of life is before you, you must eat. You must eat it. You must receive it. You must believe it. It's no use just saying, I go to a church where they preach the word of God and they lay it line upon line. And our preachers, our ministers, our pastors are very faithful and they feed us every time. How much of that word do you take? 
How much of that word do you believe? How much of that word do you receive? Apply the word. When the word comes to you, you check up your life. Am I saved? Am I sanctified? Am I standing straight? Am I being lifted up? Is my life being enriched by the word of God? And you grow by the word that you are hearing. And you are guided by the word you are hearing. You drink the water of life. You desire the bread of life. You digest the word that you are hearing. Not only that, you do it. You are not only hearers, you do it. It's not only that, yes, I've been there. I go to the Bible study. I go to the Sunday service. You do that word so that it will be a fruit in your life. After you've desired and drunk and digested and you're doing it, you declare it to other people. You say, see what is feeding me and see what is making me live a life that is victorious and you declare it to other people and you defend it. If anybody brings error around you, you defend that word and say, no, here is the word and show them the chapter and the verse. That's what shows that the word that you are being fed with is being profitable. It's making profit in your life. It will make profit in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight as we look at verses 18 to 23, the topic is following Christ whatever others do. Following Christ whatever others do. Others may not follow, but you will follow. Others may be slacking back, but you will follow. Others may not be running as they ought to run, and they may, they may not be following as fast as they ought to follow. But you are following Christ, whatever others do. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, following Christ with uncompromisable consecration. Following Christ with uncompromising consecration. You see, you have consecration to the Lord, and that consecration, nobody will take away from you. Nobody will shift you, and nobody will make you less in your consecration. It is uncompromisable. You stand on it, and you're not going to play with it with anybody following Christ with uncompromisable consecration. Point number two, following Christ with unconditional commitment. Unconditional commitment. Sunshine or rain, I'm following whether it is up and down, I'm following. I'm going to climb the mountain, I'm following. There are adversities and difficulties, I'm following. There is no condition, I say, well, if this happens, then I cannot follow anymore, and I cannot be my best anymore. If that happens, point number two, following Christ with unconditional commitment. Point number three now, following Christ despite unclear comprehension. Following Christ despite unclear comprehension. I cannot understand. What will this man do? And Jesus did not give him the answer. Uh, very well, he said, what's that to you? If I will that he tarry until I come, What's the matter with you? And what's that with you? Even though you don't comprehend, even though you don't understand, what's my goal? What's my purpose? And what is my dealing interaction with another person? Comprehension or no comprehension, you will still keep on following. Following Christ despite unclear comprehension. I pray we will follow Christ. I'm talking to the church. I say, I pray you will follow Christ. Point number one now, following Christ with uncompromisable consecration. We're coming to John chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 18. John 21, verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou gathest thyself, and walked and walked whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Look up here. You see that verse of scripture? 
that Jesus was telling Peter, number one, he was telling Peter, you're going to get very old before you, get to, before you come to heaven. It says, when you were young, you could determine where you wanted to go. You went there, you went there on your own volition. And you decided, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go here and there. And he said, when you were young, all that you could decide. But now Jesus said, as you get older, you'll stretch out your hand. And somebody will take your hand and take you with her. You do not want to go. You do not plan to go. Number one, he was going to live old. He wasn't going to die young. Number one, he was not going to die in the prison by Herod. When the time eventually came, that's why he slept, that's why he relaxed, because he knew, I must get old, I will get old. Somebody there, you will grow old. You will not die young. But then he said, as you are getting older, the places you didn't want to go when you were very young, those places, people will take your hand and lead you there. And then you get there, you say, what am I finding here? What am I doing here? He went to the house of Cornelius. He wouldn't have done that by himself. He said, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything unclean or common. I've never been with those Gentiles. I've never been in those places, but they came for him. And the Spirit of God said, I've sent them, go with them. And then they got there, he said, for what reason have you called me? Then, after they told him, after Corinthians said, we're all here to hear the word of God. He said, you must know that I've never been in a situation like this before. And by myself, I wouldn't have come. He was getting older now, and the Lord was sending him to places he wouldn't have gone before. I pray God will give you understanding. That means when you hear that uh, maybe sometimes I go somewhere that you said, but our pastor wasn't going to a place like that before. Yes, but now as he gets older and the Lord said, this is where to go preach the word there and preach the word there and preach the word there. Obedience will be the response of anyone that wants to be faithful unto the Lord. And we're going to be obedient and faithful in Jesus' name. After that, now he said, and he spake in verse 19, they spake him signifying by what death he should glorify God. By what death he should glorify God. The Lord was telling Peter, he said, when persecution comes, don't feel sorrowful. That persecution is going to make you glorify God. And when difficulties or dangers come, don't be sorrowful. That danger, that difficulty is to make you glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, somebody tell me out aloud, follow me. Can you say that? Can you say that again? Follow me. Understand? He was talking to Peter. And you're wondering why. Is he talking to Peter now? Follow me. Because he had spoken to him before. And Peter had responded. We're looking at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 18 verse 28. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Peter said, you called me at the very beginning when I met you the first time. You called me, follow me, and I've left everything, and I'm following you. We have followed you. And now Jesus said, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present life, present time, and in the world to come, life everlasting. He had left everything. Not only that, John chapter 13. In John chapter 13, reading from verse 36, John 13, Verse 36, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered, whither I go, thou 
canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. You see what Jesus was emphasizing to Peter. I'll keep you alive. I'll keep you from death. I'll keep you from any sin that will endanger your life. You will follow me and follow me truly. Follow me faithfully and follow me fully. Follow me wholeheartedly later. And then Peter said in verse 37 unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And that's what I've been going on between Christ and Peter. He called him, follow me. He rose up, let all his net, and he followed. And then later he promised, he, he reminded Jesus, we've left all and we're following you. And now at this time, he was giving the promise, whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever happens, whatever does not happen, life or death, difficulty or danger, I will follow. Look at Matthew. We're reading from Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. We're now reading from verse 57. Matthew chapter 26, verse 57. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Listen to this. But Peter followed him. Tell me. Say it aloud. Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's play, palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. To see the end. To see the end. Now Peter, who had said, I will follow. I am following. I will always follow. Now Jesus was arrested after the betrayal. And now he was following afar off. Afar off. That's why this command came, this commission came later again. We're coming now to chapter 21. Chapter 21 of John. And I'm reading from verse 3. Chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter says unto them, I go a fishing. The following stopped. He stopped following Jesus. He started following. He professed following. He consecrated, I'll follow always. He even made a, he made a kind of commitment, a vow. Whatever happens to the point of death, I will follow. And eventually, he was slacking back, going back, going back, and following afar off. Eventually, he stopped. And he took up his net. He wasn't following anymore. That's why Jesus now came to them. And that's why Jesus now said, Peter, you have stopped what you said you will do. Your commitment you have taken away. You've come back to your net. You've come back to the old trade. The consecration is no more there. Now pick it up again. That's why he now said in verse 19 of chapter 21, when he had spoken this, he says unto him, follow me. And that's what the Lord is calling us to do. He wants you to look back at your life when you were saved. When you were converted, and how you promised the Lord, and how you are following the Lord, how everything changed in your life, and whatever you are going to do, wherever you are going to go, you will compare it with your commission and the commandment of the Lord to follow the Lord. But now, are you dragging your feet? Now, are you changing? Now, are you no more loving the Lord and following the Lord like you did in the past? Now, is everything conditional now? If they say this way, I'll follow. If they touch me this way, I will follow. If they come the other direction, I'm not going to follow. 
That's not what you're baggage at the beginning. That's why the Lord is calling you back and is saying, let your consecration be uncompromisable. That nothing will touch that consecration. That you'll still keep on following the Lord. Whatever may happen, whatever may not happen. Matthew chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He's saying Christ must be number one in your life. Your commitment to Christ must be number one in your life. And your vow of following the Lord, your pledge of following the Lord, rain or sunshine, come what may, must be number one in your life. Nothing must come between you and the Lord. And no man, a mother, a, a father, a brother, a sister, a husband, a wife, anyone, a child, a son or daughter must not come between you and the Lord. And it says, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. There might be crosses you are called to bear. There be qualities that confront you. Challenges that confront you. Sometimes, might even be sickness knocking at your door. Sometimes, it's the rejection of people that you find in your life. Why is it like this? Why is it like this? Why is it like that? And the Lord is still saying, in spite of all that, you will carry your cross and you will follow me. Look at verse 20, 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall Find it. We're coming to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. He wants us to follow him at all costs, at any cost, at every cost. Whatever happens, whatever the challenge, whatever the opposition, whatever the persecution, and whatever the difficulty or the danger, keep on following and following and following the Lord. That's what meets up with his command and with his commission. We're coming to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man, Peter or John, if any man, Stephen or Philip, if any man, my brother there, my sister there, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny himself. There are some things that self would like to have. Some pleasures that self would like to have. And some recognition that self would like to have. There are some professions that self will like to get into. There are some situations that self will really appreciate. But you know, it will slow you down in following the Lord. It will cut you off from following the Lord. It will decrease your following the Lord. And it will put a dent, a stain on your following the Lord. And that's the time you need to deny yourself. You say, whatever will compete with my following the Lord, I give it up. It must be given up. Why? Because following the Lord is number one in my life. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life, protect his life, preserve his life, preserve his dignity, preserve his whatever he likes, he shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. I pray you'll follow the Lord. Nothing between you and the Lord, you'll follow the Lord. Nothing will drive you back, you'll follow the Lord. Did I hear an amen somewhere there? Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 23. And he said unto them all, he said unto them all, there's no exception to this. Salvation, there's no exception. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Holiness, there's no exception. Without holiness, no man shall save the Lord. 
And if you're going to follow after the Lord, the same way Peter followed the Lord eventually, and the same way the apostles followed the Lord eventually with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, all their consecration, all their commitment, with everything they have got, they followed after the Lord, and the Lord is giving the same challenge to you, and the Lord is calling you to the same thing. He's saying, there's no difference, I'm still the same. There's no difference, my commandments are still the same. There's no difference, my desire is still the same. There's no difference, my calling is still the same. As they followed me, so I want you to, to follow me. He said unto them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. How often? I said how often? Daily and follow me daily you bear your cross and you follow by the way what does that mean to follow the lord does that does that mean we look for where he walked in jerusalem and then we put a feet there not really look at first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 21 first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 21 it says for even here unto were ye called, not only Peter, you a believer, you a child of God, you say you are saved, you profess you belong to the Lord. It says, even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. Look at this, leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So that means in your life, your obedience is measured with the obedience of Christ. Your faithfulness is measured with the faithfulness of Christ. And your loyalty is measured with the loyalty of Christ. You're asking yourself, in any situation you find yourself, and in any community you find yourself, any challenge that comes your way, what will Christ do? What will Christ do? How will Christ respond? How will Christ react to this? He has called us that will follow his steps. You'll follow his steps in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now, and we're coming to John chapter 21, verse 20. John chapter 21, and we're reading from verse 20. Point number two, following Christ with unconditional commitment. Following Christ with unconditional commitment. We're coming to John chapter 21, verse 20. Then Peter turning about, says the disciple whom Jesus loved following. The disciple whom Jesus loved following. Understand? Jesus had not spoken directly to John. Jesus had not said, John, what are you doing there? I understand Peter being there. I understand his discouragement. I understand his despondency. I understand the step is taking. That's why I've come to recover him and to restore him. But you, John, what are you doing there? Jesus had never spoken anything to John. He had not given a new promise to John. He had not given a new commandment to John. He had not said anything, whatever, positive or negative. And now seeing Jesus, he knew that this is what I must do. Commandment or no commandment. Personal word or no personal word. Revelation or no revelation. Encouragement or no encouragement. I've made up my mind. I've decided to follow Jesus. And whether he speaks to me afresh or not, I will follow. And so you saw him following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrays thee? This kind of following by John without any condition attached if you heal me i'll follow if you provide for me i'll follow if you give me a job i'll follow if you turn to me and talk to me like you are talking to peter i will follow if you mention my name 
I will follow. If you show that you need me, you want me, I will follow. No condition at all. Unconditional commitment following Christ. It is this John we find the same place with Peter. As the Lord spoke directly to Peter, even though the Lord did not speak directly to him, John followed the full steps of Christ and he went on with Peter. Look at this, John chapter 3 verse 1. John chapter 3 verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the nice hour. John, did Christ speak to you? Oh, he has spoken to me before. And before he died, he spoke directly to me. He had called me. And that call is still ringing in my ears. Even though he's speaking to Peter now, I take that for myself too. I follow. I pray you'll follow. Look at chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. Chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when he saw the boldness of Peter and John, of Peter and John, John said, I've not heard any news in but the old message is enough, the old calling is enough, and the old call and the old commission is enough. Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them, both of them, Peter and John, that they had been with Jesus. John will not lack back, and you will not go back. I said, you will not go back. I will now come to chapter 5. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 18. Chapter 5, reading from verse 18. And laid their hands on the apostles, plural, John was there, and put them in the common prison. When difficulties came, persecution came, John did not run back. Uh -uh, I'm, I'm stopping here. I'm not going to go into that dungeon. I'm not going to go into that prison. They went together there. And when they were threatened, look at verse 28, saying, Did not we strictly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter, tell me what follows. Tell me out loud. And the other apostles, John is there too, answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. You see, from that time that John was following, he kept on following, kept on following. In fact, in fact, in fact, all the apostles died before John died. And when he remained alone, he kept on following Revelation chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto Unto who? His servant John. John kept on following. When Peter was around, he followed. When Peter was not around, he followed. When all the other apostles had died, he kept on following. I'll keep on following. I said, I'll keep on following. You know, the people that were believers at the time, I became a believer. I, I can't see many of them. Not that they backslid. Some of them have gone home. Some of them have gone to heaven. And those who are still here in life, you know, I, I don't see them every day. But I've made up my mind like John. Whether I see them or I don't see them. Encouragement or no encouragement. Opposition or persecution. Pressure or whatever it is. I will keep on following like John. And thank God that same God who accept me will keep on helping you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. I... John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. 
companion in trouble, trial, persecution, companion in suffering. He had a share of suffering, a share of imprisonment, a share of opposition, and a share of persecution. And yet he said, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, I was in the isle of Patmos, in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He kept on following, even though there was persecution. What's that? Why is that? Because it was a true sheep, a true follower, a true child of God. John, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10. This is what happens when you're truly born again. When you're a true child of God, this is what happens when you really know the Lord. You know, some people, if you don't visit them in a week, they're gone. They're backsliding. They're discouraged. They're falling. And if you don't uh, kind of pep them up, if you don't flatter them, if you don't uh, lift them up, if you don't go by their side all the time saying, uh, cheer up now, buck up now, you yeah, can do better than this, and we can follow uh, faster than this. If you don't do that every time, they say, I'm discouraged. I don't know what to do again. There's persecution, and there is opposition, and there's rejection. What am I going to do? In the case of John, in the case of everyone that is called a child of God, you follow, you follow, you follow because you're a true sheep. Chapter 10 of John, reading from verse 4. It says, and when he put it forth, his own sheep, his own sheep, his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The true sheep follow him. That's what John, that will be you in Jesus' name. And a stranger will they not follow. A stranger Will they not follow? Somebody is promising them something, uh, and he says, I'll give you more than Christ will give you. I'll give you more than you have ever got. I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you that. He says, a stranger, will they not follow? And he says, but will flee from him. Flee from the stranger. And he says, for they know not the voice of strangers. You will not follow the stranger. As a child of God, you will follow the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children, precious children. Beloved children, the people, faithful children, those who have said, I'm a child of God, I'm, a bo I'm born again, uh, and the Lord has begotten me with a lively hope into the kingdom. And because I'm born into the kingdom, a beloved child of God, a precious child of God, a dear child of God, I will keep on following. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Then he says, but fornication, no, you'll not find that. If somebody is following the Lord and all uncleanness, you'll not find that. Is someone following the Lord and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness no foolish talking. Those who are following the Lord, they don't have any time for that. They don't have any time for all the defilement of the world. They're busy following the Lord. Their whole heart, their whole soul, their whole mind, their whole will is committed to the Lord. They don't even think about any of those terrible things. It says, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, nor jesting. You found somebody, a serious-minded person, who is a jester? Not at all. A serious follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is, uh, you know, just laughing, laughing every time. A jester, not at all. Joking, not at all. He says, not jesting, not joking, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. He says in verse 7, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Those are the people who are following the Lord. You will follow the Lord. 
I said, you will follow the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 1. In First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. And ye became followers of us. You think, you remember John? John saw Jesus talking to Peter. And he said, follow thou me. And John began to think, what's Peter going to have in the kingdom that I will not have? What's the consecration of Peter that I cannot reproduce? And what is the challenge Peter will face that I will not face? And so, because Peter was following on his own without any commandment, on his own without any encouragement, on his own without any new commission, he followed after. That's why Peter was saying, when he saw him following, what will this man do? The same thing now with the Thessalonians. You know what he did? They saw other people following the Lord. They said, look at this Paul following the Lord. And what is it that will happen to me that I will draw back? And so they became followers of us and of the Lord. And of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Affliction, yes. Persecution, yes. Misunderstanding, yes. Pressure, yes. Opposition, yes. And yet they said, nothing will separate us from following the Lord. Nothing will separate you from following the Lord. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. And for from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith is God uh, to God word is spread abroad. So that we need not speak anything. For they themselves show of us. What manner of entering in we add unto you. And now ye turn to God from idols to serve the true and the living and the true God. They served God. They served God. And once they made up their minds, they didn't go back. They were not discouraged. They were not disheartened. Look at verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I pray in such a way we will all follow the Lord. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 13. First Peter chapter 3, verse 13. And who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good. If ye be followers of that which is good. That is, your character, good. Your lifestyle, good. Your conduct, good. Your attitude, good. You follow that which is good. Just like Jesus Christ. And it says, so then can hurt you or can Ham you. Let me remind you once again what it means to follow the Lord. We're looking at First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one. First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one. For even hereunto were ye called. This is our calling. Whether you've heard an audible voice or not, just like John, who did not hear any audible voice, and yet he followed, he knew this was his calling, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That ye should follow his steps. Point number one, following Christ with uncompromisable consecration. Your consecration will not be compromised in Jesus' name. Point number two, following Christ with unconditional commitment. Point number three now, following Christ despite unclear comprehension. We're coming to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 21. John chapter 21, verse 21. Peter seeing him says to Jesus, Lord, and what 
shall this man do? Stop there for a moment. You see, there are people, instead of concentrating on their own personal lives, they're thinking about Brother James, Brother John, Brother Stephen, Sister Mary, Sister Martha. What will they do? Am I the only one to be faithful? Am I the only one to keep following? Am I the only one to be committed? Am I the only one to be consecrated? I have salvation. They also have salvation. Am I the only one to pay the whole price? I have sanctification. They also say they have sanctification. Am I the only one to sacrifice every sin for the work of God and follow after the Lord? And if they don't understand why other people are staying back, why other people are laying, laying low? Why other people are fallow and they are not doing the work of God? The way they ought to do the work of God, they reveal their commitment. They reveal their consecration. And they reveal their pledge and their vow before the Lord. If they do a part of it, and they do a part of it, and they do a part of it, we'll go farther than we have gone. Leave all that alone. He says, what is that to, the, to you? When Peter asked, he said, Lord, what shall this man do? You love him, and you appreciate him, and every time you'll be leaning on your breast, and I know that you care for him so much, okay, with all his getting, and with all that you are lavishing upon him, what shall this man do? Verse 22, Jesus says unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Many times there are people, if they don't answer this question, I would withdraw my consecration. I don't understand. How about this man? How about this sister? How about that fellow? What is going to happen to them? Look at what this person has done. When I did that, this is what the church did. And this is what leadership did. And this man has done something similar. And I'm watching and I'm waiting. What is going to happen to this? And the Lord is saying, what is that to you? What's your problem with that? You have your life to live. And you have to commit me to give to the Lord. And you have the path to follow. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Even when comprehension is not clear. Even when what is happening to other people is not clear. It says you will stop all that comparison. And you will stop all that questioning. You know, and you will follow the Lord whatever other people are doing. You don't understand them. Uh, full stop. But keep on following the Lord. I will follow the Lord. Whatever others do, I will follow the Lord. I'm waiting for you. Whatever others do, whatever others don't do, I will follow the Lord. You keep on following the Lord in Jesus' name. Okay, if those people will not cooperate, then I'm going to stop preaching. Why are you going to stop preaching? You are not preaching because of them. Whether they cooperate or not, I will follow the Lord. I'm waiting for you. Whether they cooperate or not, I will follow the Lord. Whether they praise me or not, I will follow the Lord. They blame me or they chastise me, I will follow the Lord. They criticize me or they comment me, I will follow the Lord. Following the Lord is what your calling is as a child of God. Whatever other people do and whatever they do not do, follow the Lord. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, reading from verse 11. And she said, No man, Lord... You know the story here? These uh, Pharisees brought the woman to Jesus Christ. And he said, we caught this woman committing sin. And Moses said, stone her. What do you say? And Jesus was writing on the ground. And he kept on putting pressure on Christ. What do you say? And Jesus said, Whosoever does not have sin among you, cast 
the first stone. And from the oldest to the youngest, they went away one by one. The woman could have been saying, aha, so everybody is a sinner. And all these people that accuse me, look at them now. They are all sinners too. And they went back. They're going back to their career of sinning. But the woman did not say, since those people are going back and they're going to be sinning, I will also continue to sin. Look at this. And she said, no man, Lord. Lord Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Tell me now. Go and see no more. Whatever others do, all those Pharisees that went back, they went back into their sin. But Jesus said, forget about them. Jesus said, don't look at them. Jesus said, they didn't wait to receive grace for forgiveness and for freedom. But you, I command you, go and sin no more. Look at verse 12. And... Then speak Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that, I'm waiting for you, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. You will not go back to darkness, to lying, to deception, to hypocrisy. Just like those religious people, they went back into the hypocrisy. Okay, since, uh, you know, they're even leaders of religion. And they're great preachers. And they seem to be defending holiness and righteousness. And they brought me here, accusing me that they caught me in this and that. Not knowing that they themselves are also sinners. Okay, what am I doing there with holiness? If you're going to follow the Lord, you will not look at Pharisee or Sadducee or preacher or priest or worker or anybody. You will follow the Lord and you will not continue in sin in Jesus' name. And shall have the light of life. We're coming to John chapter 12. Verse 24, John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a wheat of a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, self must die. That thing that is in you always comparing yourself with other people, I about them, I about them, I'm even still better than them, I'm giving my attention to the things of God than them, all that must die. All the canal comparison must die. It says, uh, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground, die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. The one that is you know, always caring for his life, you know, my life, my work, my profession, my prestige, my popularity, my whatever, anyone that is like that, is always thinking about himself. I about shame, I about reproach. If they talk to me like that, what will the public think about me? If this, if that, and all that. A person like that will not really serve God. He will lose that life. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into la unto life eternal if any man serve me let him do what follow me if you're going to serve the lord follow the lord you cannot divorce you're serving the lord from following the lord you serve the lord and you follow the lord and you follow the watch of the lord and where i am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor i pray god will give us understanding you will follow the lord i will follow the lord you keep on following till the very end in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not as though I had already attained. Look at this man. He's preached almost in every city. And they have accused him, this man, that have turned the world upside down. He has come hither also. 
and he's treating so many epistles. He's touched so many lives. And yet he said, not as though I'd already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. What I did yesterday, all that is in the record of God. I'm not going to think about that. Today, I follow after. The consecration of yesterday years, that's in the record of God. I'm not going to be talking about that and not seeing myself every time. I still follow after. And everything I've suffered, imprisonment and persecution, this happened and that happened. I'm not going to be counting, counting, counting. You know, I see if I've done the greatest. All that is gone. I follow after. The money I contributed before, I'm not counting that anymore. I follow after. The faithfulness I had before. I'm not going to be counting that now. I follow after. I have run faster than them all. I've done greater than them all. I'm not going to think about that. I follow after. You see, that's the attitude of a person that is following the Lord. And is following the Lord even without having comprehension of what is happening to him. He wasn't asking Peter, was in the faith before me. I've been in the prison more than Peter. What's happening? And Peter and John, they were beloved of the Lord even before me. And yet, I fast more than they do. I preach more than they do. I evangelize more than they do. I run here and there more than they do. It's nothing thinking of that. That's why he said, as, it's not as though I'd already attained, or, or were already perfect, but I follow after that if that I may apprehend that for which I'm also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. I wake up in the morning, I say, forget yesterday now, there's something to be done for the Lord today. Follow, follow, and follow again. He says, this one thing I do. I wake up today and I say, how can I run faster than I did yesterday? How can I go farther than I did yesterday? How can I preach greater than I did yesterday? How can I be more faithful today? than I was yesterday, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press on, I press on, and I press toward the mark. And that's what the Lord is expecting every one of us. You will do that in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 15. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Temptation will come. They throw something at you. Pick it up and throw it back to them. That's the devil talking to you. And they hurt you. Then something will say, they know how to hurt you. And they'll take you for granted. They'll be riding on you. If you don't give it back to them. That's the flesh talking, the self. It says, but ever follow that which is good. They follow that which is bad. They follow that which is evil. They follow that which is corrupt. They follow that which is called retaliation and uh, revenge. You follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men, and you rejoice evermore. And pray without ceasing. In every sin, you give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. I didn't hear an amen there. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Will it happen? I say, will it happen? Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He'll do it in your life. Second Timothy chapter 2 Second Timothy chapter 2 Reading from verse 21. 
If a man therefore purge himself from these, look at your life tonight. What are the things holding you back? What considerations come to your mind? Whenever something you don't appreciate happens, what comes to your mind concerning following the Lord, serving the Lord, concerning laying everything upon the altar? What, whenever something robs the negative way in your life, somebody does something, says something, acts somehow, which is not very good concerning you, how do you react? What's the thing? It said, purge yourself from those things. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow, what do you follow? Again? The next thing there you follow? The next thing there you follow? The next thing there you follow? And with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, follow faith, follow charity, follow peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart, charity. Your follow charity. First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I'm not charity, if I don't follow after charity, and become as a sounding brass or a tinkling symbol, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity and become I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burnt for religion and have not charity it profited me nothing. Follow charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity is not puffed up. Charity does not behave itself unseemly, uncomely. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. Charity thinketh no evil. Charity rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Charity bears all things. That's what it means to follow the Lord and to follow after charity. Charity believes all things. Charity hopes all things and endures all things. The Lord has called us today to follow Him, follow righteousness, and follow holiness. And the Lord give us the grace to keep on following in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. That's following the Prince of Peace. That's following Christ. Whatever comes, whatever attitude other people have towards you, Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Thank God you will follow the Lord. Thank God I will follow the Lord. We will keep on following the Lord in Jesus' name. In Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, from verse 4, these are the people following the Lord. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, no fornication, no adultery, no uncleanness, for they are virgins, the pure, the holy, the righteous. 
These are they which follow the Lamb. They follow Christ whithersoever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was no guile, no deception, no lie, no pretense, no hypocrisy. For they are without fault before the throne of God. What happens to them at the end of life? Verse 13. And I heard the voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Your works will follow you. Your faithfulness will follow you. Your commitment will follow you. Make up your mind today that whatever happens to other people, whatever other people do, whatever they do not do, I will follow the Lord. And as you follow the Lord at the end of life, your reward will follow you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and we're going to pray. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord today and take all these matters to the Lord and say, Lord, I'll follow Christ. I follow Christ. I follow Christ with uncompromisable consecration. I'll follow Christ with unconditional commitment. I'll keep on following Christ despite unclear comprehension. Tell the Lord, He'll give you grace and you'll follow Him to the very end.